Hey guys, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms and I want to welcome you all to my channel. Now in today's video, we are taking six items that I've recently picked up on my thrift hauls and we are flipping them into beautiful treasures. I am so excited. I've been prepping and preparing for antique acres, which uh, the clock is ticking down, folks. Uh, it is going to be here before you know it. So I just picked out um, six different different items that I plan to have in my displays and I am flipping them for resale today. So if you haven't been to my channel before, what you're going to find is a lot of DIY, thrift hauls, thrift flips, really a day in the life of a small business owner. So if that is the type of channel that you do like, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification. So every Monday and Friday, you'll be notified when I upload a video. And if you like today's video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think of my flips. All right. Well, enjoy. For my first project, I picked up this yellow wood bowl on one of my recent thrift hauls. I paid $5.99 for it and I had a vision right away. So I'm using DIY's White Swan and I'm going to give it two coats. I am then, my vision for this was I knew I was using a lot of color in my display at Antique Acres and I wanted some pops of white throughout uh, just to kind of neutralize all that color and I had been looking for different wood pieces to paint white um, and to shabby chic back. So here I did like I said coat this with two um, nice even coats of white paint and now that it's completely dry I did the wet distressing technique and I've showed this before it is super easy and it really cuts down on the dust I just take an old rag I get it um, nice and wet not too wet where it's drippy but just wet enough where I can rub along um, and pull off some of that paint in the raised areas and in between what I do is I just go back to the sink rinse that rag right out and then I continue on um, and then I just use a little elbow grease and you know just rub a little bit um, but it does come off fairly easy and I love the way it looks um, and I just try to do it all naturally where some wear would happen on the bowl I just want a little bit of that yellow to come through so now that I have distressed it back to how I want it, I'm going to use Big Top. Uh, and anytime you're using any um, chalk style paint, especially DIY's clay based paint, um, their paint can be reactivated. Uh, so you always want to seal it after using um, just to make sure that it does not reactivate. I love Big Top. It is a non yellowing sealer. And I just applied one coat to the entire entire piece and um, then I am going to show you what I'll do next. So I always hold on to all of my little scrap pieces of transfers. Uh, I never get to use every single one. I love the IOD transfers because it comes with so many different uh, transfers in each book. Uh, but these two transfers were actually from Brocant, which um, keep our fingers crossed. They'll be back in stock real soon. Uh, but I just lay it down and I start rubbing with my transfer stick. Applying a transfer is extremely easy. Uh, when it's a curved surface like this, what I did is I just started on top and I wanted to make sure that I evenly got the transfer applied. It's just a little bit more difficult on a curved surface versus the flat one, um, but it goes on really quick and easy and I just love how this turned out. Once the transfer is on, the one thing I would recommend doing is you take that backing piece and you do what's called burnishing. You just rub it really well just to make sure that the transfer is really embedded in whatever you put that on. And then you apply a final clear coat over the top just to seal it all in. And I used Big Top.
for project two, I thrifted this really cool hand. Um, it was like a chalk painting of um, this native Indian. And I know this is not for everyone, but I do like to pick up real unique pieces to have in my booth and in my displays. And this, um, it actually had on the back the name of the print and who did it and what year. And I'm going to do just a real easy fix on this. I just plan on um, painting the frame and then shabbing it back. And I used DIY's Old School. It is like a charcoal gray color. And I thought it was very fitting um, because of the actual charcoal that was used in the print. Uh, and I applied one coat of paint to the entire frame. And the nice thing too is that even if I did get a little bit of paint on the glass, afterwards I just took um, a, like a razor and I just um, went and it came right off. Um, so that is the nice thing too. I am, I am really careful, um, but I do have some oopsies. I can't be absolutely perfect every time. Um, after that, I'm going to show you how we um, go in and shabby it back. Just like with the last project, I am taking a damp rig and this one didn't need a lot of elbow grease. I just rubbed just real gently and the detail on that frame was beautiful. I liked the color of it, but I just wanted to really make that charcoal pop and the actual border of the um, print uh, if you can see it's like a kind of like a tannish color and that was like what popped through underneath that charcoal gray So I'm just going to just like I said gently rub around the entire frame bring out that detail of it And then we're going to go and seal it so I'm using Big Top to seal it. I just waited until the entire frame was dry again before sealing. Uh, and this was a very easy process. Um, and again, I just try to stay in the lines. Um, I try not to get it on the glass and seal the whole piece and voila, it's done. And I absolutely love this transformation. I cannot wait to see um, how quickly this sells. I think this is a really unique piece. Um, and whenever I can find art that is like hand, like hand done, that's not just mass produced, I always pick it up at my local thrift stores. For project three, uh, here in Wisconsin, summer is right around the corner. I keep telling myself that anyway. I plan on doing um, a little vignette with all springy type of up northy themes. And uh, this is a appears to be an ore, so it's like obviously handcraft or it's not handcrafted, it's just must have been mass produced. But this green reminds me of, of a set of ores that I actually picked up at, um, there's like a flea market up north and it is the same green. Uh, when I saw the ore right away, I'm like, I want to mimic those vintage ores that I had picked up. So I applied DIY's Monet's Garden and I just love this green. Um, I'm applying just one coat to it uh, because I do know that I want to give it an aged appearance and we're going to do that wet distressing on it. So I'm applying one coat of DIY's Monet's Garden and I'm going to let it dry and we're going to come back and we are going to make it look old and vintage. 
So I'm just taking the wet rag again and I'm going to randomly just distress it where I would think that age would occur just around the edges on the top here and there. Uh, it was very easy with just the one coat uh, to get that aged look and um, afterwards I'm after I said I should make it look all aged and distressed um, one thing I think I'm going to go back and do is I think I'm going to add some dark wax to it uh, sometimes when I'm you know making stuff uh, afterwards I come up with an idea and so I think I'm going to do that just add a little bit of dark wax the DIYs dark wax to it um, but I love how this piece is turning out. Now I do plan on going back and painting the back of it to finish the piece off. Um, I always do that with all my pieces. I finish them off um, just so you in case you ask that question. So I'm going to go ahead and apply Big Top to seal the whole piece, again, as to not reactivate the um, paint uh, from DIY. And I'm gonna let this dry, and then I came up with the idea I'm going to add some wording to the actual long piece of this. So I'm using the set of stamps called Typesetting, and honestly, folks, I have gotten so much use out of this set of stamps. It was the best investment I ever made. I love it because it comes with uppercase, lowercase, and numbers. For those of you who haven't worked with the IOD set of stamps yet, they are super easy. When you get them, the only thing that really is recommended is that you pull out that backing and you take just a fine grit sandpaper and, and sand the stamps themselves. It just preps them and prepares them for use. Um, and then you can lay them out and um, I'm using the IOD white ink. And what I recommend too is once you lay it just hold it in place and then take your finger and rub over the entire letter to get a nice imprint um, it just uh, you know it makes it so easy um, if you just make sure you're holding it steady um, I have made um, that mistake where I've moved it and it smears and I have to start all over now the IOD ink is permanent so once you get it on here and it dries it is permanently on there the other thing I recommend is you clean your stamps right away. Uh, so I just have a wet rag sitting there and I wipe that off, the ink off, um, and then they're ready to go right back on the um, mat that it came with. I line up my um, life and I go ahead and I do the exact same thing. And I am just loving how this faux uh, ore has turned out and I think it's gonna look amazing in one of my vignettes. I picked up this old metal rusty like vase at um, one of my recent thrift hauls. I paid $1.99 for it. What really caught my eye was all that good old rust and I loved the lip around it as well. I didn't want to hide any of the rust so I decided to pull out um, that new set of stamps from IO or not stamps uh, that transfer from IOD. I have gotten so much use out of this. Honestly, I cannot tell you how many projects I have completed with this one transfer set. Um, but I pulled off uh, the backing of the transfer, I centerized it, and then I just took it my hand and firmly rubbed it down, and then I took my transfer stick and I just started rubbing. Uh, this came off so easy, and um, once it's off, I just take it and I burnish, well, I actually the little piece didn't come off so I just lined it up 
put it down, and then I burnished the whole piece on. This turned out so cute, and it was such a quick flip. So now I'm taking Big Top and I'm sealing it. Um, I just, anytime you use any of the transfers, you want to seal it and Big Top is a great um, option to do that or any type of top coat. Um, but yes, I just go ahead and actually I sealed the whole piece with Big Top, um, all four sides, just to seal in all that uh, rusty goodness. For my fifth project, I am taking this wood platter and just like I did with the white bowl, like I said, I wanted to add pops of white throughout my display uh, just to balance it out with all the color and I love how um, the white on the wood turns out um, with that wood just peeking through. So I'm using white swan again and I'm applying two even coats to both sides, so the top and the bottom. And and once that dries, I'm going to wet distress it. Now that the whole piece is dry, I am going through um, or around the piece and I am just going to wet distress all the raised edges um, just to make it look a bit aged. And I'm also going to go in the center and uh, apply some pressure and just distress um, inside the actual um, like the crevice of the bowl or the platter. So now that that is dry after the wet distressing, I'm just taking Big Top and I'm going to apply the clear coat. This is such an easy way to make um, an item or a wood piece, uh, just have a bit of age to it and just change it up. So I'm sure many people would have saw that wood platter and not thought twice about it. Um, just by adding a bit of color to it, um, like the white, you can do this in any color. And actually afterwards, I was like, oh, if I wasn't going for a specific look, I would have did this like in like a turquoise or um, just, you know, a different color. And I might be on the lookout for more of these to, to do that too. But but um, I'm loving how this turned out. For project six, I picked this old crock up um, at the Goodwill bins and uh, it had a tiny little chip on the top there. I am using Dark and Decrepit, uh, the liquid patina, and I am just applying it and it really blends it. Obviously, it doesn't fix it completely, um, but it really blended it and it was the perfect color. So after I did that, I made the decision that I was going to add a crockery set of st like stamp to this. So I'm taking the IOD's uh, air dry clay and I'm just taking a chunk of it and I kind of flattened it. I'm taking my rolling pin and just rolling it out. Um, I pull it off the backing just to make sure it's not like stuck. Um, so you can see that I'm doing that there and I like that type of thickness and I'm taking one of the crockery set of stamps and I'm just going to rub it until I get a really nice impression. 
Um, from there, I'm going to, I was looking for my knife. I couldn't find it. So I had a screwdriver and I'm just going to um, pull that uh, crockery set of stamp off. And then I'm going to take the screwdriver and just kind of like cut around it um, just to make it have that shape of the actual stamp. So now that I have it cut out, I'm just going to pull it off and just rub around the edges just to clean it up a bit. Uh, that's the nice thing with the air dry clay. It's very easy to you know pull off any of the excess and just make it look all pretty. I am going to put it down on there just to make sure it was a good fit and I like how it looks. And from here, we're going to glue it into place. So prior to gluing, uh, what I discovered was DIY's Sandy Blonde is the perfect crockery color. And I am going to take um, and just paint the edges of the actual, um, in, like the air dry clay. I'm going to do that around the entire piece. I'm going to take my hair dryer, or if you have any type of heat gun, um, just to dry that paint. And I'm not painting the front just yet um, because I want this to dry overnight uh, but I do want the edges painted just because I don't want to get any paint on the actual crock itself so now that that's dry I'm going to flip it over I'm going to use tight bond quick and thick I do have a link in the description where you can get that on my Amazon store and I'm going to just take it and use my finger and rub it all evenly over the whole piece so the only tip I have here is when you're um, applying when once I lay it onto the crock I want to leave it in that position overnight otherwise Otherwise, it will slide down and um, the other solution I have heard is other people use the blue tape and they tape it into place um, but I just leave it lay flat like this and it dries overnight I line it up um, just so and then what I do is I just go around on the edges and make sure that it has a nice um, good adherence and I wipe off any excess of the type bond that's maybe coming out and like I said I let it dry overnight so now that it's dry I'm going back in with sandy blonde and I'm going to finish the whole piece I'm just going to um, take my brush and fill in all the crevices let this dry and then we're going to come back with some white wax so now that it's completely dry i'm going to use diy's white wax uh, i go through the waxes pretty quick uh, so i just dip in what is recommended because it's all natural just take a stick and pull some out and put it on a separate container so you're not contaminating your waxes um, but i just apply a good even layer of the wax to the whole piece then i'm going to take a piece of paper towel and come back and wipe off the excess and it is filled in all the image of the crockery and it's really going to make it pop honestly this turned out so good and I love how you can very easily take an item that was damaged like this and just take it and elevate it So what did you guys all think? Honestly, I am loving the crock. 
I actually had a bunch of Crocs that I had picked up. A couple of them were damaged already and I did the same exact technique to it. Um, I kind of did a little peek in my last video. It just really enhances it and it hides a lot of, you know, the imperfections. So I was so excited when I discovered Sandy Blonde uh, was that perfect uh, crockery color. So all the products that I used in today's video can be found on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. I am an IOD stockist and a DIY stockist, so you'll be able to find all those out there. So if that is something you're interested in, um, but I, Monday's video, I honestly don't know what I'm going to be doing. I am taking a little mini vacation this weekend. Um, I know you're probably all thinking like, what? She's getting ready for antique acres, but I do need some downtime. So um, a bunch of my friends asked me to do a girls weekend up in Door County. I'm maybe going to take some video footage up there. It is absolutely gorgeous up there and I'm so excited. We are going to be staying at a really nice hotel up there and we are going to do a trolley tour. So Door County is very well known for um, like different wineries and things like that. So I might take some video footage and just slip it into the on Monday's video so you can see what uh, Door County, Wisconsin looks like as well. Plus there's a ton of cute shops too. So I don't know, we're doing the whole trolley Saturday. I'm not sure exactly um, if we're gonna be stopping at shops or what it all entails, but I'm super excited. I need a little mini vacay to just kind of wind down and then be rejuvenated for Monday. I'm sure I'm going to be flipping more items for you. I want to show you some of the stuff that I've accomplished this week as well. So it might just be a wrap up video of items that I've picked and already flipped and some flips. Um, we'll see. All right. Well, you guys have a great weekend and we will see you Monday. Bye. Bye.